We want to welcome the 839 house churches locally, nationally, and internationally. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> if you are opening a house church or already have, put the heart emoji on our Facebook page so we can be praying for you. Use the video and the altar call. Have a discussion. And we want to welcome some of the new house churches that opened this week. Uh, we had a family contact us this week from Paris, France. And I don't know if you've noticed what's going on in France, but that was pretty powerful that this family contacted us and said, hey, Randy, we're opening a house church in Paris, France. Amen. And uh, ever since we had that house church open in Egypt like two or three weeks ago, Multiple house churches now are opening in Egypt. We had another new house church open this week in Egypt as well. So Egypt, you're awesome. Amen. Amen. The Lord's using yeah. Egypt. Yeah. The Lord's using France in spite of what's going on. Because people are looking around saying there's got to be more yeah. to life than this. Right. Amen. There's got to be more to life than what I'm seeing happen in my nation. Right. And that service from last Saturday went all the way to Paris, France. Awesome. In the middle of all that, yeah. and touched some people. That's why I'm pumped. We want to welcome another new house church. We have over 20 house churches now in Morocco. And Morocco, you're Rockoland. Amen? <laughs> Awesome. Awesome for Morocco. I was in Israel for 10 days a few years ago, and we went to this restaurant and ate Moroccan food. Ooh. Uh, hey, if you guys need to send me some Moroccan food or whatever, it's good. Moroccan food is awesome. Lots of protein and rice. Uh -huh. And so uh, family style, they just come out and serve it. It's all on these big plates and you can just eat till your little heart's content. And I did. <laughs> um, we had a new house church open in India this week. The house church contacted us saying, Randy, we're praying blessing over the ministry in Chiloquin. And uh, they said, thank you for last Saturday night's service. Two different messages they sent to us that they're praying blessing over us and then they thanked us for last Saturday's service. Wow. So how far is India from Chiloquin, Oregon? Well, I'm glad you asked. India is 7,870 miles. So this message Sunday night went 7,870 miles at the speed of light through fiber optics, a family in India watched the service, got impacted by it, opened a house church, and now before we even have a Saturday again, they're blessing us through prayer. People wonder why I'm so pumped up every Saturday, because this is all, and I haven't even got started yet, the local stuff. So praise report locally. Last Saturday night, we had an 83-year-old young lady get saved. Right. Right over there. Yeah. 83 years old. It, oh, it gets a lot better. She received Christ, and when she went back to her care home Saturday night, she said, we need to reach the people in this care home. Amen. We will be meeting this week with the manager of that care home. Praise God. I always tell people, don't take a Saturday night for granted. Because <laughs> this 83-year-old lady, young lady, got saved. <clears throat> we will be meeting with the manager of the care home. This is a large care home in Klamath. To see if we can open a care home house church. Another lady who is signed into the Lamb's Book of Life also lives in that care home. Yeah. So now somebody that doesn't come here anymore 
but is signed in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now those two are going to meet and one of the sisters of the one lady is completely pumped up about something starting in that care home. Amen. Yeah. I wrote here, when one is saved, all is heaven is rocking. Mm -hmm. So in this 83, when Glenda received Christ last Saturday, a domino fell. Mm -hmm. And that domino, but we can't have a vision of trying to get all those people to come here. We can't have a vision of now that Glenda and Hani and her sister, <laughs> but guess what? They go, we can have ministry there. there. Mm -hmm. And that's what Amen. we're going to do. Amen. Amen. <laughs> See how much easier it is when your concept is now let's go there. Mm -hmm. When one is saved, all of heaven's rocking. So when Glenda received Christ last weekend, God already knew the other people that would get touched if we are willing to go there. We can no longer tell people, just come here. We need to tell them, I will come to you. Amen. And minister to you. Are you getting it? Yes. Also, that night, same last Saturday night, after the lights were off in here, the doors were closed, the place is locked down. Guess what? Our people are out ministering in Klamath mm -hmm. after the service. Amen. Also, last, uh, last Saturday night, one of the care home givers, as they were dropping Glenda off, got a copy of identity theft. So here's a worker in a care home late Saturday night. And she got handed identity theft. Because we are propelling people, causing them to move forward. So when church is over, it's not over. That's right. It's just beginning. A lot is happening during and after a propel service. I just like that word because it's different. So I looked up the definition of propel, cause to move forward. I want this service tonight to cause you to move forward. Amen? Amen. Our last Saturday service propelled people to reach out and move forward that night. Now, that's the book of Acts. When we leave a corporate service like this, it should immediately motivate us to go out and minister to people. And all of you have been doing that all week. All of you are leaders. All of you are planet shakers. Amen. Now, that's the book of Acts in action. So we've spent a couple of weeks in identity theft and I got some more testimonies. So I hope you still got a little bit of room for some good mm -mm testimony. <laughs> but the title of the message tonight is identity healing. And you might say, well, Randy, we're teaching on the same topic. Why is a different message? Because as this goes out on the internet, Key words trigger mm -hmm. different things. Right. And so I, I like to make it a little bit different when we put that fishing lure in the water. Because mm -hmm. you just don't know. Right. That little, instead of saying identity, healing. The definition of healing, to make free from injury. One of the managers at GNC got identity theft. I was in GNC this week buying some supplements and he started to tear up a little bit. He said, Randy, ever since I've read Identity Theft, people are coming into the store broken. Mm -hmm. 
He goes, people are coming into the store, some people, complete strangers, and now they're opening up to him. Amen. Because they healing to make free from an injury. I got news for you. It's not going to get any easier for people if the Lord tarries. I got news for you. It's not going to get any easier for you in this temporary body, our temporary houses, our temporary cars. Only what's done for Christ will last. Not our home, not this little dirt bag we live in. <laughs> Says God in Genesis drew, you know, man in the dirt. He breathed into the dirt bag. Are you calling me a dirt bag? <laughs> of course not. Mike's sitting there going, he is. <laughs> Mike's going, he is calling you a dirt bag. But fortunately, nobody in here has ever been offended. Right. So okay. This is an easy crowd. No offense in here. The word man means dirt. When we die, that returns to the earth. What's God's inside of us returns to him. Pretty simple, isn't it? Yep. So more praise reports. I had a pastor come to my house uh, yesterday. He wanted to come and sit down and have a conversation with me. And I was off work. I said, bring it on, man. He wanted a couple copies of Identity Theft. He was seeking out these books. He just stepped away from a brick and mortar church. God told him, that's over. You're done. No more brick and mortar. Now listen, when these men are coming to me and ladies, I have no problem with what we do on Saturday. I have no problem with rah, rah, boom, boom, rah, rah, boom, boom. And propel out, right? <laughs> but if this is all we got, if this is all we got is this service, mm -hmm. we'd be in trouble. We're in trouble. And Randy wouldn't be happy. Because <laughs> I need to see people saved every day. Mm -hmm. I need to see house churches open every day. You're a part of this church, so guess what? You get that blessing as well. So he's sitting in my living room, stepping away from the brick and mortar structure, and he's preparing to open house churches. So listen to this. This is where it gets interesting. He has been in contact with apostolic leaders in America. So apostolic leaders are calling this man, and now this man's sitting in my house. <laughs> Because now these apostolic leaders are seeing that the one service and that's it is dying. So now this man that has great influence, he has a lot of relationships. They're going, what on planet earth are you doing? Stepping away from your brick and mortar and going house church. So this pastor began to talk to these apostolic leaders about little Randy. <laughs> and this is what these apostolic leaders said. If we get an airplane and we fly to Medford and we rent a car, can we come over to Randy's house and talk to him? <laughs> So listen, we got a prophecy that made it all the way from Florida, all the way to Beatty, all the way to Randy's hands. We would open an orphan well in Chiloquin. People would begin to bust up their pulpits, bust up their, this was the prophecy handed to me. They would come to us 
and say, can you light a piece of our pulpit on fire and can we take it back where we came from? This right here is going to have to change. If I'm sitting in a church of 100 and I got 20 powerful leaders and there's only one pulpit, I'm wasting a lot of awesome people because I'm telling them the only way you're going to minister is from behind the pulpit. In the book of Acts, when 3,000 people got saved, Peter immediately propelled them to go out house to house. They started ministering daily. Mm -hmm. Then the healing started happening, Leonard in the homes. There's people that were healing people, blind eyes open, everything that we'll never even know their names till we get to heaven. But now if you have one person that does that, we make them a superstar. <laughs> God told me the last great revival that will encircle the world will be faceless. One ministry in America through videos has opened 70,000 house churches in Pakistan in 36 months and have never even been on property there. <coughs> Just breathe it in, man. Just soak it in. God is moving so rapidly. So as this pastor was sitting in my house, these apostolic leaders say, do you think if we flew to Medford, drove to Klamath, Randy would have time for us? And he said, absolutely. A few months ago, there were some leaders that needed to talk to me from the Bay Area. And the next Wednesday night, they were at my front door at my house church. If you start focusing your life on pleasing God, God's going to start bringing people to you. When you make, here's my heart, God. Here's my heart, God. If people aren't being attracted to your life, I'm not elevating myself, but if people aren't being attracted, check yourself. Mm -hmm. Say, God, what is going on with me? Because I should be a babe magnet. <laughs> I just I threw that in there. See if they, see if they were like, yeah, Leonard's going. I'm awake. I'm awake. See, when you were in the world and you were single, Shaka Khan. <laughs> And you're single, man. Woo! You might be single now. Are you getting what I'm cooking? Yeah. Guess what? You are single and ready to mingle. But then we get saved, we get married. What happened to that single ready to mingle attracting people? <laughs> That's a Randy parable. You'll get it in about 12 months. <laughs> See, it's so weird how when we're in the world or we're wanting something, we're doing everything we can. Oh, look at this lipstick. And I'm not talking about me, ladies. <laughs> You know, oh, look at this shirt. Does it make me look fat, the guys? We see the good-looking lady, we suck it in. <laughs> hey, would you like to go to the movies? <laughs> you didn't hire me. You can't fire me. I was called to make you laugh. <laughs> These people in Egypt and Morocco are going, I don't know what they eat over there, but Randy's crazy. So these apostolic leaders are going to fly into Medford, drive over to Klamath, bring it on, bring it on. Love to meet with you guys. To my home, and this is what they want to discuss, the Kingdom House to House book. 
You know when we wrote that book, probably 2021 or 2022 at the end, beginning, we had 108 house churches when I wrote the Red Book. 839 now. And now you have apostolic leaders in America wanting to fly to Medford. They probably don't even know where Medford is. <laughs> Might have to fly in there in a prop plane from San Francisco. See, church should be uplifting. It should be fun. We should be laughing, bleeding a little bit too. Ooh, that one, owie! <laughs> yeah, he might get nicked up a little bit in here from those spurs. <laughs> they want to discuss the Red Book, Kingdom House to House. This is what the pastor in my living room said. Randy, your testimony book and your identity theft book are going to be required reading in all of our house churches. So here's the pastor sitting in my home saying the testimony book and identity theft are going to be required reading in all of our house churches. He's not talking about people getting saved. He said, Randy, you've made it simple. These books are simple. Guess what happens when you don't write the book? You don't read it. Get, exactly. <laughs> Guess what happens when you don't do what you're supposed to be doing to become attractive to other people? They don't get saved. They don't get prayed for. Why do I have a pastor sitting in my home after I get off work saying, hey, Randy, these two books you just wrote are going to be required reading in all of our house churches. It always sobers me up, Leonard. What if you don't do what you're supposed to do? And then you stand before the Lord and he says, depart from me, you worker of division. For I never knew you. Now you're going to say, but Randy, I know him. So do demons. So do demons. Demons know God. They know Jesus. Demons know about the Holy Spirit. There's got to be some fruit coming from your life. Man, we haven't even gotten to the book Did yet. <laughs> Be praying for us. I'm talking about the congregation all around the world. Be praying for us as we value and encourage these apostolic leaders. Mm -hmm. And propel them to go house to house. We're not just having leaders come over and sit down with us that oversee one church. We're having leaders come sit down with us that oversee hundreds of churches. And boy, I tell you what, we better be praying for these guys. Because if they go back to their denominations, they go back to their elder boards, and they go back and say, hey, guess what? We're going to go to this. Then you'll have to make a choice. Do I need that minister's license with my name on it and that big rubber stamp of that denomination? That's right. Do I need that for my identity? <laughs> and that's what they're going to have to ask themselves. Because they come sit on my couch, <laughs> my house. We got 14 books we can let them read. <laughs> All right, let's let's dive into this a little bit. So we're in we're in identity theft, and we're on page 15. So I just want you to know some prophetic things are happening 
as more and more of these leaders come and meet with us, Randy's not special. I'm just available. There are people that God needs to bring to sit down with you, but it has to be more than just this. It's got to be out there. So you need to be going out there. Because this, they've already got. What they're looking for is how do I go out there? So Ryan was talking to me, the manager of GNC. He wouldn't care if he watches a service if I say his name. But he said this woman was in the store, <clears throat> late 50s, just devastated by identity theft. And because he had read the book, he immediately recognized what the Lord needed him to say. The Bible says to be ready in season and out of season. Amen? Amen. So that's just a testimony about the book. <clears throat> so we're on page 15. Uh, we've made it through a few pages. Now, what's so awesome about this is there's people all over the world. We just got thank, a thank you from India for studying the identity theft book. Because now for them, they're going to have it on video. They might never get a copy of this. Sure, we would send them one. But now they have these services on video. And they can use them over and over and over and it's a lot easier for them to send something from Egypt to Morocco, from Morocco to Algeria, from Algeria to France, via video. Not Viva Las Vegas. That's an Elvis song. Oh, you guys weren't thinking that. I'm sorry. You, you got it? It's... it's there's some serious people in here. You've got to loosen them up a little bit. So Philippians 3, 13 through 14. That's the beauty of these books is they are loaded with Scripture. And even when we open that booth at the farmer's market, we're not going to be trying to hand out as many books as we can. We're going to try to be talking to people, not just passing these out like candy. Try to have a little bit of a conversation with them. So Philippians 3, 13 through 14. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do. This is Paul writing from prison. It's pretty awesome if God can get you tied down and isolated and a little beat up, a little whipped up, all of a sudden, you start hearing stuff. I tell people all the time, when you're blessed and you got money and you're just footloose and fancy free, boy, you better be on your face because you'll forget about God. I'm not saying Paul had done that, but boy, he wrote some good stuff in there. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on, verse 14, towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I wrote here, I press on towards. I wrote the word propel. What caused Paul to move forward? Forgetting and straining. Too many of you have spent years going around the barn of your past. You go around the barn and pass the hot dog stand weekly. You keep doing laps around the same stuff over and over. What propelled Paul to press towards the goal? To move forward, he said, forgetting what is behind, I have to strain. Some of you aren't straining hard enough. 
It's easier for you to complain and remain. If you complain, you're going to be bolted to that situation for the rest of your life. And your life will be so toxic that somebody that's hurting and needs their identity restored, they can't even approach you because you have nothing to offer because you're still messed up in your identity theft. Well, Randy, are you saying you're perfect? Absolutely not. But I'm constantly saying, God, tear out of me anything that's going to keep repelling people away from me. God, if it's an attitude, the way I look at people, Lord, rip it out <coughs> so I can be attractive in Christ. But so many times, instead of straining, we yield and we have a pity party. Well, if I would, if I would, if I would. I know that's irritating. Stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> if I would have had that dad or if I would have had that mom or, or if I would have had that, that I know we all have been through it. I'm not making light of that. But you're going to have to start straining right. because you're wallowing in it. You're not straining. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was the first verse. <laughs> says, verse says, sorry. Uh -huh. I'm going to imprint this in your brain. If you complain, you remain. So when that person pulls up to your house or pulls up to your cell phone with that waste management truck, and you sit there on your little pretty face next to your little pretty ear and you let them dump their complaining and remaining in your ear without propelling them, guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to smell like that. Yeah. And then unfortunately, you're going to go talk to somebody else about it. Is this helping anybody? Amen. All right. One amen. Thank you. Oh, that was my, that was my wife. No, there was more. Two. Only the Holy Spirit can help you forget the past and move forward. The definition of the word forget. Oh, this was worth the price of a mission. We, we can say this and you can go home. <laughs> but I'll give you a little more. Listen to this. The definition of the word forget means to put out of one's mind. Cease to think of or consider. Paul said, forgetting what's behind. The definition of the word forget means to put out of one's mind. Why do we keep hearing out of your mouth criticism of people? Mm -hmm. Why do we keep hearing criticism of yourself? Mm -hmm. why, do, why do we keep hearing criticism of of everything in the country. Right. When your mind is supposed to be set on heavenly things. Amen. The reason you complain about everything is it's on your mind. Yeah. Let me help you out. You got enough problems making sure you're flying straight. That's right. I used Sam and Sean the other day as an illustration. If Sam calls me and needs advice, most of the time it's not what he wants to hear. <laughs> you can talk to him later. I would say amen. Yeah. If Sean calls me and asks my input, and it's not what she wants to hear, but she knows I value her. 
She right. knows I want her to succeed. Right. Then how can you be running down somebody that you've never met? True, yes. How can you be running down people that you don't even know? It means you have an identity issue. Mm -hmm. Because you think you've arrived in all of your woundedness that you can have an opinion of how to critique somebody. Right. Stop it! Amen. <laughs> Stop in the name of love. <laughs> Before you break someone's heart. Yeah. It, it, it just comes out. <laughs> we have not making it through one page yet. <laughs> this, this might be a one page. <laughs> you should see this awesome group of people I have here. Now I'm talking to the camera. Because it's like we're putting a pair of pliers on a molar and... Right. Does that hurt? <laughs> no, Randy, it didn't hurt. Harder. Harder. <laughs> Definition of forget means to put out of one's mind, cease to think of or consider. Yep. Yeah. Why are you talking about this still? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is this still coming up? Because you like it. Mm -hmm. You like it. You like petting that demon. Ooh, mm. look at that little baby. <laughs> you guys got to quit pet. Yeah, Robert just, I even got, I got a head shake out of Robert. So that one went way deep, man. You see Robert shake his head. It's, that was a good one. It's time to stop saying what happened to you and start focusing on what happened for you. God wants you to allow him to mold and shape you through what has happened to you in your past. Amen. What the enemy intended to use for evil mm -hmm. in your life, God will turn around and use it to help you grow stronger and more dependent on him right. and enable you to be an encouragement to others. That's what's going to make you attractive is when you've dealt with your own waste management dump truck. That's right. Some of you have these storage units in your heart and man, it's packed to the back and to the top of all this carnage asada. You need to have a yard sale. Mike, we need to have a garage sale. We need to open up that storage unit in our heart and say, how do you owe me? And just get rid of it. Right. Yeah. Some of you actually have stored injuries that you can think about them and bring them back to the present in a second. Mm -hmm. You can't afford that anymore. These people that are going to be walking up to that booth at the farmer's market are going to be hurting. They're going to be destroyed. They're, they're going to have major issues. So when you're sitting there in that booth smiling, you need to have dealt with your stuff yeah. as much as possible. Amen. So when they look at you smiling, they don't think it's fake. They can feel it's genuine. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. We're just going coast to coast tonight. Genesis 50, verse 20. You intended to harm me. There's demons that knew your great grandparents. They knew their parents. They knew your grandparents. They know your mom. They know your family. And their intention is to harm you. And if you have a generational curse of alcoholism, drug addiction, perversion, most likely a temper. Well, I just get angry, Randy. 
I just can't help myself. I'm just, I just get angry. I guarantee if we looked in your family tree, there's somebody who looks just like you. <laughs> and it don't look good. Because that's got to die. Mm -hmm. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. Amen. See, all that garbage in your life when you say, I receive Christ, I have the Holy Spirit in me, all of that garbage now is an asset. But guess what happens if it's still stealing your identity? You're not effective because you haven't forgotten that the blood of Jesus washed all that. The grace of God removed all that. And if you keep bringing it up, you will move people away from you, not to you. I want every one of you to have a pastor sitting in your home saying, uh, Leonard, Patty, we got some apostles flying in from Texas and they need to talk to you about house churches. I don't want that to just be me. It needs to be all of us being attractive to people. Man, I am all over the place tonight. As usual, Randy. Turn your stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Now, many of you sitting here tonight, oh, he's, he's looking at me. He's, he's talking to me. There will be hundreds and hundreds of people watch this message. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's, it's not just about you. This is happening all over the world. So let's look at Romans 8, 31 through 39. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one, no one. You are not allowed to condemn people. That's not in your job description. And definitely don't condemn yourself. There's no condemnation in Christ. Christ Jesus who died, this is verse 34, more than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is inter He's interceding for you. I might blow a gasket on my vocal cord. Okay, do you know how that'll jerk the slack right out of your chainsaw mouth when you start nye, 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 nye. and here's Jesus praying for you and here you are ripping somebody to shreds in Jesus name well I'm just an angry person and I like it who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall trouble Hardship, persecution, or famine, nakedness, or danger, or sword. As it is risen, for your sake, this is what was happening to them right then. As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. That'll change your life. It should have changed your life. 
People have heard this 200 times in church. That's right. And they're still dealing with their storage unit. How can you read something like this and not be on fire for Jesus? I'm giving you all. Why, Randy, why do you got to yell? I don't know. <laughs> it just happens. I am giving you all these scriptures to help build your identity in Christ. Before we go into the next chapter, you need to know the enemy's tactics so you can defeat him. So the priority is for you to know your identity in Christ. You are awesome and Satan knows it. You are awesome and Satan knows it. That's why he tries to get you to be like him. Satan, the Bible says, he's restless. He never, ever rests. That's his goal for you, to never be able to rest and be restless. You are awesome and Satan knows it. That is why he is wetting his pants right now <laughs> as you are reading this book. Amen. You know what's awesome? I've written this work. We're going to stop. I've written 14 books. And in a matter of weeks, we've had to order 200 copies of this one. It's the littlest one in the stack. <laughs> I'm not boasting in myself. But one night I sat down at six o'clock and the Lord goes, I need you to write a book, Grant. And eight hours later, I put the last period on the page. But halfway through, guess what? My eyes were hurting. I was tired. I had to get up at five to train my first client. And the Lord's like, where are you going? I said, I, I, got, I, I think this is a good place to stop. And guess what Jesus said? I don't. You're not. <laughs> Sit down, Rad. You're going to finish this book tomorrow morning at 2. It was Thursday night, but I wrote till 2 in the morning from 6 to 2. I had to strain. I had to strain forward. I can't push you if I'm not pushing myself. You're never going to attract people unless you're pushing yourself. Because you'll look just like them. You'll sound just like them. You'll complain just like them. And you'll tell them all your problems just like them. And then you'll scoop up a big hand of poo-poo from your past. And you'll plop it on top of your head. <laughs> and here you are with a big pile of poo-poo on top of your head. Patty likes this. <laughs> here you are we're walking around. You got flies buzzing around your poo-poo on your head. And go, you want to be like me? Come to church. Okay. Randy, that is too graphic. Oh, don't tell me. When you guys were in the world, we know all about graphic. But actually, there was a prophetic word years ago of that. People putting on their heads and Satan laughing at them. That was a prophetic word from the Lord through a prophet. It just happened to come back to my brain. Oh, Lord Jesus. And I used it in a very gentle way. Okay, let's do an altar call. An altar call after poo poo on the head and flies? Yes. We want you to get cleaned up. Amen. Right. 
So we're going to pray a prayer with you right now. I think we stopped on page uh, 18. We'll be getting into some more scripture next week. This book might take us a couple of months. I don't, I don't know. I think Easter is coming up or something. So we better be religious or something. Easter. I need to teach on something about that. So we're going to pray a prayer with you. The Bible says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus, the Lord, you'll be saved. The time we're living in, which Peter quoted in Acts 2, out of the book of Joel, God's pouring out his spirit. How do 70,000 house churches open in Pakistan through a ministry and it's all through video? That's God's spirit being poured out. How is campus crusade life whatever that is, they'll have 39 million decisions for Christ this year through cell phones, one every second. How is Nora Lamb's ministry in China, she's not even alive anymore, having 25,000 people a day receive Christ in China, all house churches. What that is, is God is moving quickly. So I'm gonna try to propel your little behind out of this building to go do something for Jesus. Remember, you complain. <laughs> I heard Layla's now. Now I wish when I was seven years old that I was coloring and hearing this nightmare voice. <laughs> now if I was seven and hearing somebody preach like this, I probably would have echoed like the seven-year-old just did. Now, she might be coloring, but she listened. Right. And you know what? Layla, Layla rode to church with us tonight, and she said she was in the back seat with her grandma, and she goes, I was good last time. <laughs> and I said, yes, you were, Layla. And guess what? She's being good again. Yes, she is. I should have put her on the front row two years ago. <laughs> but she got a little sister coming up. She's going to be three tomorrow. But I got a new one I'll probably have to train. <laughs> oh, sorry. We're trying to get you saved. Isn't live TV or live recording and then we post it? I didn't forget about you. <laughs> so we're going to pray this prayer with you and as you pray this prayer to receive Christ the Bible says the Holy Spirit the third person of the Trinity is going to come as a deposit comforter, counselor, teacher advocate full meal deal maybe even the Happy Meal toy <laughs> if you're in a country that doesn't have a McDonald's Google it Happy Meal toy I know, you're trying to get saved I'm sorry why do people get saved all over the world from this service? Because we're just being simple. We're not so serious. Oh God, may you save. <laughs> That's not us, sorry. So let's pray this prayer with you right now. And all those in your house church, there's probably more than one of you praying this prayer right now. And you're going to think Randy's just a normal minister because you're the first one I've ever seen. Thank you. I am normal. I appreciate that. <laughs> so we're going to pray a prayer. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, believe I believe that you hung on a cross and that you died and paid for my sins. Jesus, I believe that you rose again on the third day. Jesus, I ask you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Amen. Amen. So if you're going to open a house church or you already have, put the heart emoji on our Facebook page. Um, use the video on the altar call. Have a discussion. The reason I know Jesus' return is closer than it was is the Jesus film now is in 2,040 languages. They're 3% away 
from having every language, every dialect on this planet done this year. Wow. So that movie can go into any country, any village, any place on this planet. And you know what's amazing? When they put up a sheet of all these people that have never even seen or heard the gospel, when they start beating Jesus on the film, the people start picking up rocks and chucking them at the screen because they don't know it's not real. Right. And when they're beating Jesus, they're stoning the guys that are beating Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Even before they get saved, they know this is wrong. Mm -hmm. We love you guys, and we'll see you again next week. Be praying for us.